This video is sponsored by PCBWay. This is a BE4108. They are a very, very powerful brushless motor that when you slap a wheel on the outside can get a robot up to terrifying speeds and deliver massive hits. I have been using these on Melty Brains for a while now, but in the last set of fights I did, I had some issues with them. So it's time to see if we can upgrade them. So what can we actually upgrade? What is wrong with this? Well, to look at that, we need to look at the broken one that came out of my last Melty Brain. There's uh, one very obvious thing to look at here it's that this coil should be sitting in here and glued in place, and yet it uh, was not. In fact, it may not even be glued in, it might just be press fit on, which when you're talking about a large amount of force going out this way, that is a thing that is going to pop this core out. And when that starts moving around in here, it means that there is no power going to the can, and therefore no power going to the wheels. And instead what happens is it winds itself around the internal hub, dragging in all the wires and just causing a big, big mess. Then on top of that, we have the motor shaft here. This one here is, it looks okay. It looks like it has survived the combat totally fine. However, it is just a push fit in the top with a singular grub screw in through this hole here, holding it in place. And if we look at the relative length of the stick out of the shaft, we can see that this one has shifted, which is not good. These are held on by a retaining clip at the very back of the motor. And when the motor shaft shifts like this, it means that the can of the motor can shift out. And that is still a valid position because the retaining clip is where it's supposed to be on the back. When this motor can shifts out like this, it offsets. Wow, that was very, energetic, but it offsets where the magnets are from where the coils are, meaning that they are separated, meaning that there is less energy coming from the brushless motor, and all of that is very bad. So a single grub screw retaining the entire shaft in here is just not good enough for high speed YOLO driving like I'm doing. So how do we fix all this? Well, with the help of today's video sponsor, PCB way. They have sent through three beautifully machined replacement shafts that have a bunch of cool features on them. At the very top here, you can see a bolt hole pattern and also a hex. This is a standard size hex that will fit in a standard size spanner, which will be important for doing these motors up later on in the build process. Then in the middle, we have a well machined four millimeter shaft which slots very nicely into the bearings for the actual motor itself and allows it to spin really, really freely. Uh, of course, this is the piece of the motor that's not meant to spin, so it's not balanced and that does give it a little bit of a vibration in my hands, but it does spin incredibly nicely on that shaft. Finally, at the end here, we have a four millimeter thread cut this is to hold a four millimeter lock nut later on. This will be the thing that clamps the entire motor together and keeps it solid. This is going to be way better for us than that tiny little grub screw and the retaining clip on the old motor. Along with three of these so that I can do two motors and one spare, PCBWay have also sent me a bunch of mounting PCBs. These have all the right bolt placement to hold on to the 4108 brushless motor, and then a couple of extra bolt holes to attach them into the frame of the Melty Brain. I need these because the old version of the Melty Brain warped its wall when it hit something really big, and the force of holding that motor on just pulled all of the HDPE outwards, uh, which is not great. So these are gonna provide us a lot more rigidity and strength in that very critical area of the build. So the next step here can be quite tricky. It's to get this ring off. Now, as I mentioned, these can pop off in combat quite easily, but actually getting them off without damaging the motor can be quite difficult. I'm using a single screwdriver, which is a very flat tipped screwdriver. I'm putting it in one side and then holding the back of the clip Hang on, let's see if I can do this all on camera. This is very tight and tiny. 
Uh, so hold the back of the clip with a finger or something else that locates it, put the blade of the screwdriver in one side and then just kind of like turn the screwdriver and try not to turn the clip itself. Basically what you're trying to do is turn the screwdriver, trying to turn the screwdriver to force the prongs apart. Uh, it is difficult and tedious and if you don't get it right, the whole clip moves rather than uh, spreading out. Okay, I've got it. I have a better way to get these off. The last couple of methods I was looking at was kind of assuming that we wanted to keep this circlip alive and be able to reuse it later. That's not what I'm doing here at all. So the easiest way to get these off is to, again, a tiny little very thin flathead screwdriver and I just put it under one of the prongs and lever up and out. This basically forces it out of that groove and I can just keep going around until the whole thing just kind of like bends its way out and I can grab it and pull it and there it is. That was way easier than all of the twisting method I was doing earlier on. Now there is a little brass bushing in here. I want to keep this because that is going to be very useful for having underneath the M4 lock nut when we put that back on. It would just yeah, provide a little bit of a, more of a slippery surface. So if we over tighten the bolt accidentally, it's not compressing the bearing too hard. Uh, so we're gonna take that little guy off, uh, which is sometimes a little difficult. I'm just gonna, no, oh, no, he's wanting to sit in the groove there, unfortunately, but that's cool. We've got a couple of spares for later. And we can just pull this apart. now. There's a lot of magnet force holding this together. And it's difficult to do, but it is possible. Uh, I might even actually use the PCB for the next one. If I bolt that on, that's gonna give me more leverage to pull the top off uh, than this one did. And also, yes, putting the PCB on does make it easier to separate the motor. It just gives more grab on this side, and I've only even really got it in here with two screws, and that's just more than enough to be able to crank the motor open very easily. With our three motors parted, there's just one last thing I wanna do in here before heading into the shed to kind of finish up all the rest of this, which is to scratch up this nice gold ring inside here and also a little bit of the silver. I need to be careful with the silver though. I don't want to scratch any of the windings because that could cause a short and basically mean that the whole motor is gone entirely. Scratching this up is to provide tooth. I want to add some epoxy to this to keep this ring in place, stop it from coming apart like the last one did. So I'm really, literally just gonna take a little needle file here and just go to town like really scratching the edges of everything, trying to make sure I'm getting both sides of the lip. I want everything to have enough tooth to have the epoxy glue in place. Obviously, I don't wanna to get too close to the bearing because I don't want to apply epoxy to the bearing itself. That'll seize everything up and also make the motor not work. This is gonna be a slightly time intensive process, just making sure I've got enough scratches everywhere I want scratches. Uh, so I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera and we'll see you out in the shed. Okay, it is epoxying time. Uh, I've only got this five minute epoxy, so this should be good enough for now. I mean, I have only had one of these had issues, so I'm really hoping that just with a little bit of epoxy, we can stop that from happening ever again, basically, and just make them a little bit stronger. Now, if I was doing this for a larger weight class, I would probably go ahead at this point and add epoxy in between the windings and also in between the magnets on the stator. But these shouldn't feel that much uh, force on them. So I think they'll be okay without that. Uh, if I need to, eventually I will go through and you know update these and add more epoxy to them. I've got more of these motors and also they're not too expensive. It's part of the reason I use them. I know that putting a wheel directly on a motor means that motor is a little bit expendable uh, and is gonna eventually break or be hit or something along those lines. So I didn't wanna go crazy expensive on the motors that I was gonna be putting in harm's way. Now, the actual epoxying of this needs to be done very carefully, again, to avoid the bearing in there. 
I can, I'm happy to run out onto the, uh, the windings a little bit because that should be absolutely fine, but touching that bearing is a really big no-no. In actual fact, I probably should have gone through before this and taped up that bearing or something just to stop me from touching it accidentally. But I think we'll be okay. Just going carefully around the edge. Oh, that got a little close to that bearing. I'm not sure, ah, that should be okay. Um, I'm not super, super happy with it, but it should be fine. Also, no, I'm not adding any extra material to this. Like uh, when people do magnets and things, they usually put like a little bit of filler in the, um, in the epoxy. I don't think it's needed here because this is just really to grab hold of this lip and make sure that the, uh, the windings don't go anywhere. Cool, that is one down. I will do the rest off camera. Before we do anything else, we've got to get this grub screw out because otherwise the shaft here isn't going to push through. Now, these might be Loctite, they might not be. Let's see what we can do. Oh, okay, well that went really easily. I didn't even have to put the Allen key in the high torque setting, which is just putting it in this way around. You got more leverage on it that way. But I didn't even have to do that. Okay, so no wonder the shaft on that other one slipped. It's really not being held in there with much force at all. Hopefully the final tool we need for this build process is an arbor press. That's what this guy is here. It is just a hand cranked press. I have one of my press dies here. Uh, this is to go inside the motor can and hold everything in place while I press the motor shaft out and press the new one in. And I've got another one to sit on top to hold everything square. I put a two and a half to three mil pin in my arbor press here. That is so that that's the thing pressing on the shaft, allowing it to go all the way through. Then it's as simple as putting down our press jig. Actually, we need to put the motor can on the press jig and then put that down. Then we line everything up so that the pin touches the shaft fairly centrally and push down. And that happens a lot easier than it should have done. Okay, so here we go. We now have a couple of motor bows, well, basically all of our motor bows, done without a shaft in them. And then if we take our shaft from PCB way, it actually just slots in here quite nicely. I am not sure if that's because the hole in this is tolerance to be a little bit looser, or if pushing the other motor shafts out has loosened that up a little bit, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to be using the four holes in the top to attach this plate down to the motor itself. This will hold in quite rigidly. And when the, hot, the plate is held, like it just, it holds together very nicely. I can also put that grub screw back in the hole. Okay, it is time to get this together. I have already put the shaft through and mounted up a couple of bolts. Uh, and then I'm gonna put the grub screw in. It's, I felt it was better to put the grub screw in after putting in the bolts that kind of mount everything up and get it all seated in the right spot, just so that the grub screw doesn't have a chance to like push it out of alignment. Cause so I was a little bit worried that that might be the case. Now I don't wanna like over tighten it. Again, the bolts at the top should keep everything lined up where I want it to be, uh, but I still don't want this grub screw to like move the shaft in any way. And then once that's in there, and then take the base and put these together very carefully. You can see I'm holding the back half uh, in these little notches so my fingers are away from the gap between the can of the motor and the motor itself, just because this is gonna snap very quickly. Yep, there it goes, just like that. Spins very nicely, that's good. We like to see that a lot. Uh, and then on the back side, I'm gonna take these tiny little brass washers and I'm gonna think put in two. All of them had two to begin with, so I think that's not a bad idea. Uh, I mean, those probably were spaces of some kind, like to get to the right height for the ring. But I think for us, that's also probably not a bad thing to do. Just have less contact between this nut and the bearing in underneath it. Uh, make everything spin, hopefully, a little bit freer. Now, this is why this guy is a hex, because now I can get a very big wrench and put it on one side 
and kind of like, I'm just gonna like basically slit, slot that in there and then hold it upside down uh, and get my socket that goes over an M4 lock nut and I can just tighten the thing all the way down and I don't have to worry too much about holding the bell of the motor or the can of the motor and getting it to sit down. That is tight, potentially a little bit too tight. So we just fit it back up and like a quarter turn back just to let it loosen up. And yeah, there we go. Much better. Okay, that is looking good. The final thing we really need to do is attach this to our PCBs in such a way that the wires come back through this little gap that I've left that will allow the wires to go into the body of the robot and just keep everything uh, nice and neat effectively. It also, I've only got one slot in here and it's only done kind of in one way so that there is a lot of strength through the main section, especially the bits where I've had to, you know, cut away material to leave bolt holes and things. It's just necessary to have as much material in here as I possibly can to keep that strength. Because again, these motors and these walls that attach to them are under a high amount of strain as they uh, spin up and have the entire wheel and everything on this end pulling away from the robot with centrifugal force. And there we have it. One massively upgraded motor ready to rock and roll in a melty brain. Now at this point, I need to redo this chassis, which is just a lot of work you have seen me do a number of times if you have watched my, all my Melty Brain videos. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna end the video here, but sometime probably towards the end of September, I'm going to do a live stream, which is basically a, I'm gonna start in the morning and we're going to test and code until the Melty Brain works and works way better than it does at the moment. Uh, I may have to stop for lunch and things. I haven't really thought about the logistics of streaming basically all day, but that is something that I want to do is to go through and spend a day getting this robot working a lot better than it has been working. And I think it would be fun to do that with you all out there uh, watching along and helping me out as I stream and do this. I've got a few little bits and pieces I need to get together before I can actually do that. One of which is of course the brand new chassis, which is gonna hold the brand new motor mounts and the brand new upgraded motors, which are feeling so good. I'm very, very keen uh, to get these in a robot and fire it up because that's gonna work really, really well, I think. But yeah, uh, so look out for that. Look out for a stream towards the end of September where we are just spending an entire day doing melty things. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.